So the Detroit Lions selected TJ Hawkinson with the number eight overall pick last year. And, you know, he bursted onto the scenes in week one. Um, but a lot of people before that were kind of wondering, is this worth it? Is a tight end getting selected with a number eight overall pick uh, a correct pick? Even if, you know, he's someone who can still uh, be very, even if he is very good, I think everyone figured, okay, this guy's great at a draft, but a tight end that early, is that the correct decision for us to make? Especially when the Lions, you know, they couldn't really afford a luxury pick so much. They kind of needed, uh, you know, they needed a lot, let's be honest. Um, but they went out and got him, and the doubters after week one were immediately feeling stupid because he bursted onto the scenes. He had six receptions for 131 yards. He also had a touchdown, and so things were looking great, but then he ended the season with 367 yards and just two touchdowns. So, you know, he had basically over a third of his output in just that one game. So, uh, you know, I figured it'd be interesting to go back see what went right in that first game and then what went wrong throughout the rest of the season, which resulted in him, uh, you know, not doing too much. Part of it was injuries. He, he missed a few games, but uh, there was some other stuff as well. So I want to get into all of it. First, let's start off with the good against Arizona. Um, and, you know, I made a video about uh, Marquise Brown. I, I'm not sure if I'm posting that uh, before or after this one because I'm making them at the same time. But there's actually a lot of similarities between those two guys. Brown, you know, he bursted onto the scenes week one, had a big game against Miami. But a lot of it was due to Miami just not playing very well. Well, it's kind of similar with Hawkinson. A lot of why he was able to have so much success uh, in this week one matchup was because he was going up against Arizona, a team that we would find out later would be the worst team against tight ends and especially against quick tight ends. So, uh, you know, that's part of why Arizona went out and drafted Isaiah Simmons, someone who can be physical enough to keep up with a tight end, but also fast enough to keep up with one of the faster tight ends. Uh, Arizona didn't really have any answer. Like a play like this, it's going to be a cover two man and that's going to be Hawkinson's route. He's going to be cutting up towards the sideline on the top of the screen. And if you notice, the linebacker who's in charge of covering him is currently on the hash marks on the bottom of the screen. So if Hawkinson's running towards the sideline and the linebacker in charge of covering him is very far away, this is obviously a very good situation for the Lions. This is just them not really uh, taking Hawkinson seriously and they're going to regret that severely as you know he's able to easily get open and at the, you know even run after the catch and pick up even more yards. I mean, that's just... Uh, just a mistake by Arizona more than anything, but also, you know, listen, give him some credit. He ran that route well and was able to pick up more yards after the catch. So, um, you know, he did his part for sure, but honestly, I would say the vast majority of that was just an Arizona mistake. Uh, again, I always say what the good teams do is they take advantage of opposing players' mistakes. What the good players do is take advantage of mistakes. He took advantage of a mistake there. Don't hold it against him, but this will factor in. I mean, this next play also, it's another mistake where um, it's it's man coverage again. You have those two Arizona players who are covering Hawkinson and uh, the halfback. And the reason why I have those two, um, the reason why I'm focusing on those two is because it's going to be play action and Hawkinson is running around over the middle. So, okay, you know, this makes some sense. You, you will sometimes uh, be able to get this open. But watch what happens right after the ball is snapped, and look at how well it works out. The Arizona player who I have in that box right there, who is closest to Hawkinson, he wasn't even supposed to be covering Hawkinson on this play. He was supposed to be covering the halfback, but he just looked over and realized, okay, this guy's wide open. I have to do something about it. So he's just alertly abandoning his assignment to do the right thing here. Uh, you can't blame him so much. I mean, you know, he was in position to cover his player, but then... Uh, he realized that another Arizona player completely bent on the play action and ran further in. So, you know, good job by Detroit. They fooled Arizona on the play action. But the reason why I'm kind of bringing this up is because it's it's more so a good X's and O's sort of scheme play than it is him just being great and getting open by himself. You know, he runs the rest of this route well. And again, he has that speed and open space. He's able to pick up a ton of yards after the catch. So I'm not trying to take away what he did. He did some things very well, but... This isn't the kind of thing that he's going to be able to do consistently 16 games in a season. And listen, he had some good plays too. I'm not trying to just say that like it was all scheme and, you know, he just did a little bit, you know, to help uh, after he gets the catch. He made some good plays. This one is a one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's the route he's going to be running. And what I really like about this move that he's going to pull off here is that he waits a good amount of time before actually cutting over the middle. So that way when he does, he gets to the inside, he gets that leverage, and gets enough separation, he's able to make the grab. 
Uh, that was probably his best play of that game was that route right ran right there. That's a very good, well-ran route. So, again, I'm not trying to act like he's some terrible player. He isn't. Uh, I'm not trying to act like it was all luck. It wasn't. He did some things very well in that first game. But I just want to put that there because I want to give you guys the context that, yes, he had great numbers that first week, but it wasn't so much because of how good he is. He, he, he It was a lot of... Arizona doing poorly more so than him doing great and now that teams knew exactly how to prepare for him and they had better personnel he was never able to really even come close to what he was able to do that week one game we kind of uh in a lot of ways will use like one game as sort of you know to rank someone's game oftentimes we'll just look at like the yards uh but it doesn't really work out that way you know his 131 yard game wasn't really the equivalent of a 130-yard game if it was against a great defense, you know. So, you know, these things, they, they hold different weight to some degree. Again, he was great in that game, don't get me wrong, but uh, there's a reason why he, the next highest total yards he had in the game was 56, and, you know, he didn't have over 35 yards in a game until that week, which was week 9. The next thing I want to transition and talk about, and probably his biggest weakness as an NFL player right now, is his IQ. It seems like he just, uh, he needs a lot of reps, to be honest. He needs to get out there more and just get a lot of reps, because I think that he uh, he, he, he made some, play, some plays that, to me, a lot of them do look like they're rookie mistakes, but at the same time, he definitely made a good amount of rookie mistakes, and so hopefully those will be cut down in his second year when he's had more experience, but like, this plays an example it's going to be a cover one play. So, you know, the middle of the field is, it's, it's an end zone situation. So they're taking away the middle of the field and Hawkinson's route, uh, what he's going to do is man coverage and his route is going to be cutting towards the middle of the field. So, you know, there's not a lot of space for him to operate right here. He might get open for a split second. It's a good angle if they can get it there. But again, if a Philadelphia player in the middle of the field takes away this route, it could be completely, you know, it'll be completely gone at that point. So for Hawkinson, he's going to have to get open relatively uh, quickly. He doesn't have a lot of space to operate here. And so right after the ball is snapped, you know, that's the Philadelphia player he's going up against. And this is seemingly in a decent situation. You know, he's closer towards the uh, bottom of the screen than the top of the screen. So, you know, if Hawkinson is trying to get towards the middle of the field, there could be some separation right here. So, you know, and he, he can't get there quick enough. It's going to be about how does he cut right here. And there's a couple of things he could do. One is he could just cut, you know, just go up to the top of the screen. Don't do anything fancy. The other is he could make a move and then try to get up there. You know, he could fake as though he's going down, then go up. That's another option he has on the table. What he's going to try and do is make a move uh, and then go up. That's the decision he's going to make, which you could already say is probably not the best move. I think, you know, you have when you already have the separation, you don't have to worry about getting more. Trust your quarterback. Just try to get open. Uh, but he's going to make a move, which I don't hate. I mean, I think it's you can do either one. Uh, but the problem is going to sort of be with his move. And watch how far he's going to step out, which at that point, that long stride gave the Philadelphia defender plenty of time to come back and get into the play. He basically ran straight into him, and you don't want to do that. If you're going to make a move, you have to really make the move, and his move was not a very good one. So again, it's understanding what you can do, knowing that in that situation, if your move is going to be to jump right into him, uh, that's not going to work out too well, and it can result in an easy uh, deflection. What you want to do is, if you are going to make a move, you want to do it quicker enough because you don't have that much space. He just he didn't have enough space to pull off the move he wanted to make, but he still tried to make the move, which is, you know, again, that's a rookie mistake. In, in college, that move probably works out. In, in the pros, it's a little bit different. Talent level is a lot higher. You have less room for error. So that's not anything that I'm worried about. And actually, I think that's a positive because he's going to learn how to, you know, fix those mistakes and he'll be better his second year and he'll probably get a touchdown on that play as opposed to not being able to make the play. This one's another example where what's going to happen is that it's going to be a quick screen to Hawkinson. He gets the ball, dives forward towards the end zone for a touchdown. A couple of Detroit players block in front of him. Simple, you know, doesn't get too fancy right here. What could I even break down? Well, you know, right after he makes the catch, the ball is maybe a little bit low, not even really that low, but watch how he kind of just already starts diving right here. He's already going down, which, listen, you are supposed to dive towards the end zone, so, you know, that's not a terrible, like, mindset totally, but in this situation, he can, you know, he doesn't have to dive right here. He, there's no one really in his area. He can be on his feet. He just hasn't really 
uh, had time to look around and see what's totally going on. So when he dives and gets close, he ends up getting stopped just short of the goal line. Whereas if he stays on his feet and then gets tackled and falls forward, he's getting a touchdown. Uh, he just he went down a bit too early because he didn't totally know what was around him, and that resulted in them not being able to get the touchdown. So again, that's just something where it's like. The more reps he gets, he won't do that in the future. But he did that this time, so it has to be mentioned. But I do, again, I really do. I think that this is these are mistakes that he will fix in the future and will get better at. That's that's kind of my stance. One more error, and this is kind of a weird thing to talk about as an error, but I noticed it a decent amount, so I am going to bring it up. Um, it's going to be that uh, he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup. He's running a fade route against a, a Green Bay player. And uh, so, you know, again... Pretty simple. He's a tall guy. Uh, just throw it up. Hope he can make the grab. Nothing too too fancy there. Uh, and so that's what they're going to do. They throw it up to Hawkinson. But he, while does make the catch, he then loses it in the process of trying to haul it back in. It results in an incompletion. Again, this is something that you might be saying, okay, well, that's kind of, a, you know, how often throughout the course of a game does that really happen? But th this happened a couple of times. This is not an isolated incident by any means. He also had another touchdown that could have been that didn't happen I believe that was in the Philadelphia game although I could be remembering that wrong but he had another play where it could have been a touchdown but he had it in his hands and then lost it so you know when you get both hands on the football uh and you have it for a second in the end zone you got to find a way to come down to catch if you're going to be a superstar player and, and so that's just kind of uh where he's at you know listen Hawkinson he's still a great blocker he still has a ton of value um but he I think that he's it's going to take him a bit until he be, is able to become the guy who he was week one. And honestly, I don't know if he ever actually was the guy who people feel like he was week one. I think he was probably a bit overrated after that game. But the other thing I'll say is that, listen, tight ends historically take a very long time to develop. And they're almost never good their rookie season. So, you know, these are things that we will we sort of expect for him to to have to learn and grow from, I think. At least I do. I mean, the guy only had... 525 total snaps last year and 180 of them were him run blocking so you know and 30 of them were him pass blocking so he only had 300 uh snaps where he actually ran routes last year so you know that's the problem with tight ends it just it takes a while for you to get those reps so uh you know I think that he I think he'll be good in the future but at the same time let's not get too ahead of ourselves here I almost feel like he got a bit, he's now going to be a bit underrated because he had that one great first week. People are saying, well, what's happening? Why why didn't he continue doing that? But just because he had one great week doesn't now mean that he's going to be the first tight end ever or one of the first tight ends ever to burst onto the scenes and have a Pro Bowl season his rookie year. That almost never happens. But I have confidence for him heading into year two. What do you guys think about TJ Hawkinson? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.